Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at an interest rate parity problem. So let's take a look at our problem. If the spot exchange rate between the United States dollar and the British pound is $1 per 0 0.7434 um, British pounds, and the nominal annual risk-free interest rates on 90-day securities are 5% in the United States and 6% in the United Kingdom, what is the 90-day forward exchange rate between the British pound and the United States dollar in terms of pounds per dollar if interest rate parity applies? So our equation for this is that the forward exchange rate, and I'm going to abbreviate a little bit, forward exchange rate divided by the spot exchange rate must be equal to one plus the applicable return in the home country divided by one plus the applicable return in the foreign country. Now, when you are using this equation, the exchange rates need to be in terms of home currency per unit of foreign currency. So we need to actually think through who we're going to call home and who we are going to call foreign. And I recommend that we write that down. So when you're working these kinds of problems, it's helpful to keep track of who you're calling home and who you're calling foreign. So in this particular case, if the currency exchange rate cur exchange rates between the currencies need to be in terms of home per foreign, so units of home per one unit of foreign, well, the exchange rate I have here is 0.7434 British pounds per one dollar. And if it needs to be in terms of units of home per one unit of foreign, it's actually easier to call the US foreign and Great Britain home in this context for the sake of the problem. So we are going to call Great Britain home and we are going to call the USA foreign for the sake of this problem because it'll make the problem just a little bit easier. Next thing that we need to do is we need to be mindful of these interest rates. Now importantly when we are doing these interest rates the interest rates that we plug into this formula need to match the time frame associated with the forward exchange rate. So if we start looking at the equation that we have here, the forward exchange rate that we're asked for is the 90-day forward exchange rate. So if we're asked for the 90-day forward exchange rate, then that means that the interest rates that we have over here need to be 90-day interest rates. Now, if we assume that the year is 360 days long, um, then in that case, a 90-day period is one quarter of a year. So from that standpoint, if we are looking at KH, KH is the home interest rate, and we are calling Great Britain home, then in that case, we're going to have 6% per year, but I need to have a 90-day rate, and there are four 90-day periods in a 360-day uh, year, if we're um, kind of uh, adopting that convention. So that means that KH is going to be equal to 0 0.06 divided by 4. And that means that KF is going to be equal to 0 0.05 because the interest rate in the U.S. is 5% per year. And we need to divide that by 4 to find the applicable 90-day rate. And if you pause the video for a moment, you can work each of those out. Okay, so if you pause the video, what you should have gotten is 0 0.015 for KH. And for KF, you should have gotten 0 0.0125. All right, so now that we have KH and KF, let's come back to our formula here. So our spot exchange rate needs to be in terms of home currency per one unit of foreign. We're calling the U.S. foreign. So what we need to put down here is 0 0.7434 divided by $1. That whole portion is our spot exchange rate. Okay, so that whole piece is our spot exchange rate. And then we need to plug in our home and foreign rates here. So 1 plus KH, which we found was 0 0.015. And then 1 plus KF, which we found to be 0 0.0125.
And now we filled in all the pieces of our equation. And what we need to do though, is we need to solve for the 90 day forward exchange rate. So to solve for the 90 day forward exchange rate, we need to get rid of this denominator here. So the easy way to do that is to multiply both sides by this denominator. So both sides of this equation by this denominator. So if we kind of squeeze that in here, 0 0.7434 British pounds per dollar. Okay, and then over here, 0 0.7434 British pounds uh, per dollar. Then what happens in this case is that this denominator cancels out. And so what we're left with is a 90 day forward exchange rate is equal to this times this. So at this point, you should pause the video and work out this piece right here. Okay, so if you worked out this piece right here, what you should have gotten is 1.002469. Now when working with exchange rates, it's generally a good idea to hang on to a few extra decimal places because when you start exchanging currencies, um, basically maybe a million dollars or a million pounds or what have you, um, a few decimal places out here in terms of the exchange rate actually can make thousands of dollars of difference or thousands of pounds of difference if we're exchanging large quantities. So it's actually not uncommon to see exchange rates that include a lot of decimal places. And as we're dealing with exchange rates, let's hang on to some extra decimal places here. And then if we bring this piece down, then that means we have 0 0.7434 over a dollar. And that indicates that our 90 day forward exchange rate is equal to this number times this exchange rate. So at this point, you should pause the video and multiply through the numerators here to see what you get. Okay, so if you pause the video to work that out, what you should have gotten here in the numerator is 0 0.7452 British pounds per dollar. So we retained the units and that's why you have to be careful with the units all the way throughout. So that means that the 90 day forward exchange rate between the uh, British pound and the dollar if in terms of pounds per dollar is 0 0.7452 British pounds per dollar. So this is the 90 day forward exchange rate. Now, that's if interest rate parity holds. Uh, it is also worth noting that what if you worked all the way through this problem and you realized, oh, I wanted this 90 day forward exchange rate in terms of dollars per pound. Well, as long as you were consistent with what country you called home and what country you called foreign, all the way throughout the problem, and as long as you properly accounted for the time dimension of these interest rates to make sure that the length of the forward exchange rate contract matched the length of time associated with the interest numbers you plugged in here, if you followed those conventions, the numbers you got here should be correct, but if you wanted dollars per pound instead, you could just invert this and divide it out and that would give you the correct answer. So at this point, you know how to find the forward exchange rate and how to use the interest rate parity equation. So if uh, you have a few moments, I recommend that you try a few other examples and see how you do.